order and ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the May 19th County Commission meeting. I would remind you to silence your cell phones. The meeting documents are on the end of the counter next to Commissioner Bender. And um, Ken is over there if you need a listening device for this meeting. With that, we will start with routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. Is so moved. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Item number two is approve the county commission meetings from May 12, 2015. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any corrections? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is bills to be paid in the amount of $466,319.08. Is there a motion? There is. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Commissioner Madam Chair, the, this week's uh, bills include $253,000 uh, towards the library that we uh, share the cost with the city. Any other comments? I have a motion to pay the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four is reports. The Register of, Do of Deeds official report of fees collected during April 2015 is on file at the auditor's office. Item number five is personnel action. A is consider a motion to approve the routine personnel action. Is there a motion? Make that motion. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number B is consider updates to the Minnehaha County travel and meal expense policy deferred from May 5th. Carrie Deaver. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. Last week we went over a couple of policy changes that are being brought forward just for your consideration. Uh, the state has made some decisions about reimbursement rates for travel expenses that will be effective for them on July 1st. And we're just bringing this item to you for your consideration to see if you want to make similar adjustments in the county's rate policies. I believe last time we spoke you were interested in uh, the financial impact that this might have to the county and Robert Wilson prepared for you a spreadsheet <coughs> summarizing expenses that have been incurred to date in the different areas and it looks like if I'm reading his figures correctly the impact to this would be about $3,000 a year based on the expenses so far this year. Sorry, Carrie. Oh, fine. Um, any questions for Carrie on this? Did you want to consider this? Carrie, use mine. Sorry. <laughs> no, My computer's mixed up. So, um, are there any comments for Carrie on this issue? Did anyone want to make a motion on this, or do we want to just sit on it until after? I'll make time? that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second, and that would be to approve. Approve. Approve the new travel expense reimbursement rates according to the state levels, correct? Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Item number six is um, applications for abatement. We have tax exempt ones first with Kyle. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Kyle Halseth, Director of Equalization. We have a unique bunch this morning. First one being for the Embrace Church, record ID 55318. This is for 2013 property taxes payable in the amount of $2,042.96. The second is for the Sioux Falls Housing Corporation, record ID 30131, 2014 property taxes in the amount of $934.45. Item C is the Carroll Institute, Record ID 31420 for 2013 property taxes in the amount of $332.87. Item D is the Carroll Institute. Record ID 31420 for 2014 property taxes in the amount of $2,968.95. Those are the exempt ones. I would look for a motion for those first four. Uh, so, move. so move. 
Second. A motion and a second for the tax exempt properties A Madam through Chair, D. I have a question Commissioner for Barth. Uh, Kyle, so like on the Embrace Church, they got a different building. Is that how did this not get put on, you know? Right off the bat, uh, shown they had a different so. building, but I, from what I understand, had neglected to file the deed. So uh, those exempt properties need to make sure they get their paperwork done too. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. The next ones are owner occupied. Yes, item E is Norman L. Rons, record ID five one three eight one. For 2014 property taxes in the amount of $1,562.08. The next one is Ronald Trelor. This is the Omar's Market. Record ID 48243. 2013 property taxes in the amount of $371.71. And 2014 property taxes in the amount of $375.60. The last one is for Phil Kappen. Record ID 41898. For 2014 property taxes, in the amount of three hundred fourteen dollars and sixty one cents. Is there a motion on the owner occupied? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those in favor, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, Kyle. And then we have elderly freezes. Pam. Good morning. Good morning. I have one for the morning and I have record ID four zero 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 for a uh, freeze the amount of seven hundred fifty seven seventy eight. Is there a motion on that one? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second on the elderly freeze. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number seven is notices and requests. There's a notice of the South Dakota Department of Transportation and the City of Sioux Falls and Sioux Falls Metro Me Metropolitan Planning Organization, the MPO, for a public open house on June 1st, 2015 at 5 o'clock. Uh, item number eight is the planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item number nine is a petition for compromise of lien. Jeff Barth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is for DPNO 2946. The amount is $20,369.85. Uh, the applicant came in and asked for uh, help filling out a request for compromise, uh, and he's offering us $10,000 towards that 20369 uh, amount. Um, the lien was established in 1981 for public defender uh, services. Between 81 and 2012, the applicant has received public defender or court-appointed attorney services on 30 occasions. Hospitalization and medical expenses have also been paid in this lien. Uh, the lien has been partially compromised a couple of times. As you know, we, uh, on an annual basis, reduce uh, uh, some amounts that are, are larger, and I think we now do 30000 Is that right, Cindy? Yeah, but it used to be if it was more than 20000 we would reduce it. Um, and he's also, uh, on five separate occasions, it's been reduced by a total of $3,147. Partial payments of $3,480 have also been received. Um, the applicant uh, wants to take care of the lien and said he could pay $7,000. Um, uh, they he talked about uh, all the liens or forgiveness that's happened already, and he suggested that he could maybe do $10,000. If, if you look at the situation here, uh, the, the party certainly received a huge amount of service from this county. Um, the, the fact uh, that some of the crimes charged were of uh, the very uh, most serious nature that anyone can be charged with in any community, um, and that he's currently not in prison for them shows that he must have gotten some good representation. Um, so there's also some information in here that he may be expecting an inheritance, and this could be perhaps part of the impetus for uh, trying to resolve this at this point. I, uh, I don't believe the applicant is here, but if he is, he can uh, make a statement. He doesn't have to come to the podium. He can say it from wherever he's seated, and he doesn't have to identify himself. Is the applicant here? No. Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, Madam Chair, uh, 
You know, when I look at the seriousness of the charges that this man received, and obviously the excellence of the defense that our fellow taxpayers uh, gave him, I uh, would make a, a, a motion to decline compromising this lien without payment in full. I'll second. second. I have a motion and a second to leave, um, to deny the compromise of lien. Are there any comments? Are there any comments? Commissioner Bendigo? Uh, my only question is, is on these application forms, we generally get a tax return, and I know he's been in prison for a number of years, uh, but I don't see a tax return. It's just a K-1 partnership. Yes, that was the only documents that he could produce for us uh, as far as his proof of income. Okay. Are there any other comments? Uh, Ken, if in fact he does get an inheritance, uh, will this encumber that inheritance? Technically it can, as, as long as we know about it and when it happened and take the necessary actions to lay claim to it. The problem is with a lot of these things with county aid liens, I mean, if, if this individual had not been forthcoming and said, I'm expecting this, and you know that's why I would like to get this resolved. If we had not known that, there's really not a lot that we would see typically in advance to, to help lay claim to this. A lot of it, uh, um, there's a lot of stuff that happens out there. You know, like when people get divorced, and you know we have to split up lien accounts. A lot of that stuff goes on without our direct notification. So, well, if it's an insurance proceeds, would we? Do they look to liens before they pay it? <clears throat> they can look to liens. They'll also look for any recordings at the Register of Deeds, making a claim on any uh, real or personal property within the jurisdiction. So, Any other comments? I'm a little conflicted on this just because this person has no job, has no income, and we're being offered $10,000, and if we deny it, we might end up with nothing ever and that's the only reason i'm conflicted by it the seriousness of his charges is going to make him difficult to get a real high level paying job going forward and so is there ever going to be any money and this is a pretty good offer so that's why i'm conflicted so any other comments uh, madam chair i guess uh he did have seventeen thousand dollars in income uh, from investments uh, so, you know, that's, uh, he may be able to afford living without having a job. Come investments. Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Barr? This is to deny, right? To Aye. deny. Bender? Aye. Benega? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Heiberger? No. Motion passes 4 to 1. The next is the opportunity for public comment. If you have anything that you would like to speak to that is not on the agenda today, this would be the time to come forward. So, see no one, we will go on to regular business. Item number 10 is consider an appeal of the decision of the Minnehaha County Planning Commission to approve conditional use permit number 15-23. <coughs> Kevin Hookman. just kind of tell you how this is going to go. Um, staff is going to give a report and then we would have the um, questions for the staff. Following questions from the staff, we would follow with the applicant making his um, comments with anyone that is in favor of the um, applicant after that could make questions. And then if there are people who are opposed to this application, they would be able to speak after that time. I would remind you to keep your um, comments to new information and not stuff that has already been stated um, and to keep your comments as brief as possible not to repeat yourself repeatedly and I'm wondering how many people are going to speak um, in opposition to this just one two okay all right Kevin all right Kevin Hookman County Planning Department uh, this is uh, to hear an appeal for a Class C dairy CAFO on uh, this property. 
located approximately two and a half miles southwest of Hartford. Uh, the petitioner would like to build this dairy operation on a 10-acre parcel um, on kind of the northeast portion of this lot. Um, the, uh, the, currently, there is a operation that is standing at the existing farmstead. It's going to be about 1,000 feet further south of the, this proposed dairy CAFO, which uh, we decided is enough to, con to call this as a new CAFO instead of joining the two because of operational styles and distance. Uh, the facility is proposed to have 990 animal units, which is uh, one underneath the threshold for state required permit. Uh, for a dairy operation, uh, each animal uh, is, for a dairy cow, is worth 1.4 animal units. So for this type of operation, he is allowed um, uh, three or 713 animals, dairy cows, um, but he also acknowledged that he's going to be having uh, heifers and dry cows, so the numbers may vary based on those as one animal unit. The site plan. Uh, it does note two large buildings, uh, a freestall barn and a calf barn and dry cow barn, uh, and a milking parlor that's attached to the freestall barn. Uh, to the west would be located a lagoon. Uh, the petitioner also did note that there will be a feed containment to the north of this, which would be a kind of a pile, a dome pile, and that there will be a um, a manure separation room that is attached as a lean-to is to one of these buildings. Uh, for a CAFO to be allowed in the county, there are several applicable requirements that must be met before the approval process. First, the uh, operator shall maintain inspection records and maintenance records of the property and manure facilities, uh, and that is part of the uh, manure management plan. Uh, copies shall be filed with the county annually. Uh, he must have a manure management plan and to show that he has enough acreage to uh, apply the manure uh, in, a, in a safe manner. Uh, the site must not be in a watershed protection overlay district, which it is not, uh, and that the site must also include provisions for rendering surfaces. Finally, it is required that a registered engineer approve the lagoon and facilities um, before being and while being built. The manure management plan uh, is uh, looked to have separated dried solids that is going to be used for bedding pack in the, in the stalls. The liquids will be stored in the lagoon. Um, the liquid manure will be knifed into nearby farmland uh, as so it would be incorporated when it is applied in the spring and the fall. And the management plan does indicate the applicant has enough cropland available for the nutrients. Uh, the effect on enjoyment of property and surrounding areas already permitted. Uh, the primary use of the area around this is ag land with some uh, intermittent uh, single family dwellings. Uh, the, uh, for the requirements for the Minnehaha County, it requires a wa signed waiver of anybody living within a defined setback based on animal units, uh, which are these lines. This blue, light blue line is the dwelling unit um, uh, slash business uh, line that has to be required waivers. Um, the one dwelling unit, let's see if I can show you on this, is located right at about this line, uh, and we have not received a waiver from that property owner. Um, and it is unlikely that we will. Uh, nearby, there are also other single-family dwellings, a dog training facility, uh, and a lake located upstream uh, from the property, uh, all which would be uh, outside of this, this buffer area and minimally affected by the operation. Uh, the effect should have little effect on development other than possible uh, single-family development, uh, but the comprehensive plan does re warn against residential development inhibiting productivity in agricultural country, uh, county, parts of the county. Uh, both the Hartford and Humboldt uh, townships were notified of this operation uh, before the um, planning commission meeting, uh, and neither of them had any uh, concerns about the operation. Uh, the primary uh, concerns for uh, 
that the measures to be controlled for offensive nuisances would be the odor concerns, traffic concerns, and management plan of dust. Um, a primary effect to control these, these concerns is a shelter belt uh, that is not on the site plan, but is indicated that he was willing to plant a shelter belt uh, as staff is recommended and required. But uh, it is also recognized that in no case that the order can be completely eliminated. Uh, in the, the planning commission meeting on uh, last month, uh, the planning commission did approve the operation with a four to zero vote uh, with the um, conditions. They did add two conditions to the permit from the, regu from the uh, staff recommended. Uh, the conditions added was a test cell must test well site must be dug downstream from the lagoon four water quality tests shall be completed within the first year of operation and samples taken as needed after that if the water quality test failed to meet minimum standards then testing shall take place four times a year until the problem is corrected and then uh Condition 14, a general water pollution control permit for concentrated animal feeding operations shall be approved from the DENR and a copy shall be filed with Minnehaha County Planning Department. And that is the state permit. Uh, these are just some general pictures of the site. Uh, there's kind of a, a hill there that the, is the approximate location of the, the buildings, the barns. Uh, and you can see the farmstead in the background closer to the farm said uh, this is looking this is looking to the the west towards the lake uh, on the left side of the, the picture uh, you can see a little building there and that would be the the Sioux Valley Retrievers Club uh, this is also looking west right, right at the hill this is looking at the road um, looking south towards the uh, the existing farmstead and then this is looking straight east uh, to the the next quarter which um, is also uh, not very heavily populated um, staff was uh, informed that uh, it was requested that a map be made of the uh, the, those who oppose the of those who signed the uh, uh, appeal letter, uh, and this would be the map of all the residences uh, and the setback buffer areas. Um, this is based on the last name of the residences because they did not give an address on the appeal letter. Um, so if there's any errors, uh, it can be corrected as people come up, but this is what we can find. So, Do you speak up a little bit? Um, uh, these are the, the residents of the people who signed the letter, uh, the appeal letter, uh, but the we are unsure if this is uh, fully correct because this is based on the the land ownership and last name because they did not provide addresses on the letter so can can you explain once again now, the black line the black circle this one yep yeah so, so the outside that black circle is the municipality line um, which uh, grows for uh, incrementally from as you add more animal units and that is for the distance set back from the municipality and there's no uh, cities and no that. problem there okay, okay then the dark blue, the blue line the dark the dark blue line mm -hmm. is a setback from public parks okay uh, and that is not a problem either okay. and then the the light blue line is a setback from dwelling units and businesses, um, churches, and that sort of thing. Um, and as you can see in this map, the house point is just off the, the blue line. Uh, but, and it is really close. And it, I've, I did not do it quite like this when I said that the waiver was required. Um, and I looked at the map and I looked at the GIS and I it looked very close so I said that it needed to be required for the waiver so it is very close to this boundary line so it is a pro it, that initial buffer line is 1980 feet from the site that's the white line so yep that's the white line 
And so the house is outside the buffer line? It, it's really close. It might be. It might not be. Uh, that's why I, it's in that kind of gray area of, I can show you on Minimap if that's all right. I did bring up Minimap, and it's, it gets really close to whether or not this uh, house is truly in that buffer area or not. But I was deciding to play it safe. <coughs> so the, the house is right. The house is right here. The hand is at. Mm -hmm. And. Um, the the farm is right or the proposed CAFO is right here um, if you measure it it is right at about 2,000 feet so um, it's very difficult to tell questions for Kevin Commissioner Bart going back to your other map uh, where are the uh, other residents in the area that did not sign the uh, petition are there any other homes in the area that <clears throat> that are not identified there I uh, yes. Um, I w wish I. It's a good question. I I don't have the map for you okay. right now. I was just wondering. <clears throat> uh, most, if you see a smaller parcel on there, it's yeah. likely that the smaller parcel has a house. Uh, so there's one like on the east edge of the circle there, uh, right there. That's yeah. likely to be a residence. Yeah. In the municipality circle. Okay. Yep. So you didn't pull up a GIS to determine the distance. I don't no. think we can get into it from here. I don't understand this. Uh, no, the the map was so when I, when the GIS made this this boundary on the 10 acre described parcel, um, I, I it was originally just. I'm gonna go back here. Yeah. This was the map that was made. Uh, so I looked at this map, and then I looked at the uh, the mini map, uh, and decided that, that was right at the border of that line. Commissioner oh, Kelly, what I thought Jeff was asking is: there anybody? Is there any other homes within the light blue or the dark blue circle? No. Period. <laughs> and. and so that south, that so, home so in the south is the closest one to yes, this operation. Thank you. That is the, the only one within the, that area. Any other questions? I have one question. So the petitioner was informed that a waiver was required? Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions for our staff? Okay. Kevin, we we'll hear from the petitioner. I'm Kyle Obers of 26193 460 60th Avenue, Hartford, South Dakota. And I'm applying for this. Could you uh, point that microphone straight at your mouth there? It's. Uh, and I'm applying for this 999 cow capco. Uh, we're a fourth generation family farming on this operation and every generation prior to me has been involved in milking. Uh, my father most recently in 2001 was milking approximately 120, 150 cows on this place. When we started this project out, we made the decision to start milking again. It was a very low budget facility, you know. We weren't spending much. It was going to be much like the old operation. It's transformed into a state-of-the-art, multi-million-dollar facility. But it's still a family operation. We have no investors. I'm, we're making all this, you know, this is a family farm to, still. This operation is going to be robotic, which means there's going to be less traffic. I'm not going to have a bunch. I'll have a few employees still, but I'm not going to have the number of employees a typical 500 cow operation will have. So I'll have less traffic coming out in the country. We're, just, we're gonna have one milk truck a day, you know, 
we had one every other day before. So there's little, there's, there's gonna be minimal traffic coming in and out of the dairy. Uh, there'll be a feed truck once a week, but overall the robots will minimize traffic out in our neighborhood. Uh, the robots will also lessen peak water requirements. Um, we've already been approved by rural water. Uh, the only condition is they might require a tank just to make sure that we don't ever go over the peak. But it looks like that shouldn't be an issue, but nonetheless, there'll probably be tanks installed just in case. Uh, this facility is gonna have a manure separator system. We're gonna be separating solids from liquids. This helps prevent crusting on the lagoons, which when the crust breaks open, emits, you know, that's when you build up your manure. Ex, ex, you know, the gases come out then all at once. So it's gonna uh, reduce that, per, uh, preventing odors. Uh, we're gonna be using our solids then from the separator system as bedding. So once again, there'll be less trucks, trucks coming out hauling in sand because you're, you know, a cow pulls out 50 pounds of sand out of the uh, free stalls a day on average. So there's quite a bit of sand coming into these dairies. We'll be eliminating that. We'll also, with, as coming with fly, fly control, the separate system helps with that and the fact that our lagoon isn't crusted over, it doesn't give the flies a place to rest, ne or rest nest anywhere on the surface of it because it's water. Uh, the interior of the barn is gonna have a scraper system that will be scraping the barns once a, or once every hour of the day, which is gonna help with air quality in the barn. We're gonna have a tunnel ventilated system, so we'll be emitting, you know, there'll be air moving through all the time. It's a hybrid tunnel ventilate building, so 95% of the time there'll be a fan going. So it's not like a typical tunnel ventilate where there are periods where the fans quit, gases build up and it kicks on. The only time when it will be shutting off is usually 20 below. So even if there is a small time when we have a little higher concentration of gas, it's in the middle of winter when nobody's outside, all the windows are closed. And it'll be minimal at most. Uh, once again, this ventil tunnel ventilation barn during the summer maintains an eight mile an hour wind speed in the buildings. Flies do not stay in these barns. They, you know, you go into a dairy, a lot of times cows are sitting on fly on backs of these cows. They're not in these barns. We've been in tunnel ventilated barns. Look at the ceiling. I mean, the barn's five years old. There's no fly specs because, I mean, it's just not an environment that flies care to be in. So fly control, I mean, we'll be doing some spraying, but for the most part, a lot of it's being controlled just in our barn systems. Uh, we'll be having engineers, um, engineering lagoons, everything else. We've been working with Eisenbrunn. Um, we've already done some tests uh, where the lagoon site is. We went 18 foot deep and it's been solid clay all the way. We left it open for, I believe, about three weeks. There wasn't any water in there. So before we've even done any dirt work, there's already basically no permeability. We filled it with water, left it for 36 hours, there was no drop in water. So we already have a good clay base to build our lagoon system in. Uh, on our farm already, we're doing grid mapping um, for fertility. So, you know, we're, we're gonna put manure where it needs to be, not just going out and applying it. Uh, I work with Central Crop Consulting. They do a lot of manure management plans for in, in state of South Dakota. They do a lot with that already. We have 10 year history with them. Um, I'm enrolled in the CSP conservation programs at the NRCS. Um, and I, and since the last meeting, we have been added into the watershed for Skunk Creek. It has happened in the last 20 days, which means we're now qualified for additional funding to close down the CAFO that my father is running. So that CAFO to the south will be closed now and there'll be, he is gonna build a new one a mile east. He's already submitted plans with planning and zoning for that. Uh, so an issue last time was the CAFO uh, still being there existing, you know, my father's, not mine. 
uh, that's going to be closed down now and moved out. Uh, we have we own a large land base manure wise in this area. We have what, what we rent. We've rented most of it for quite a few decades now. I got signed agreements from five neighbors for an additional three thousand acres minimal that I can apply manure on if for some reason I don't have enough acres. That was something that came up last time. I got near 3,000 acres approved since then. I got the agreements right here. Uh, in regards to our neighbors, there are in the municipality ring, there is seven houses. Um, inside the blue ring, there are none. I used a uh, map he just pulled up and I couldn't get a hold of the Wi-Fi, so I just took a picture of it yesterday. Uh, to the north edge of our trees is 1,920 feet from the house. The lagoon is gonna be a minimal of another 240 feet above that. So that puts us at that 2,100 to 2,200 feet minimal from, the, from our neighbor's dwelling, which is where we have to be away. Uh, but nonetheless, we are doing, you know, we're doing a lot of things that technically could get this setback reduced. I mean, we have our existing grove of trees plus, uh, you know, a new grove of trees planted in the last 15 years. It's 70 foot tall on the north side of our grove. Plus, there's the neighbor's grove of trees all between. We're doing the manure separation. We know we're... We're doing what we can to minimize the effect. Plus, we got these groves of trees, and they're technically outside of the setbacks. Um, majority of the traffic from this farm will be traveled on the mile in front of us and the mile east. There are no residents on these two miles besides ours. You know, that's the only residence on those two miles, so we won't be affecting, you know, people with the traffic between our CAFO or even my father's CAFO. <laughs> Uh, no one lives on those roads. Uh, an issue is land values. Land values are only going to be bolstered by this dairy. Um, the last three parcels sell in this neighborhood. Two of them are bought by us. The third one, my uncle was the second last bidder. Uh, last three sales also, as far as acreages were concerned, they, 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 acreages couldn't get bought off of them. The farmers do not want acreages out here. In fact, the only thing that's gonna hurt land values is building acreages on your property in this neighborhood. So land values are not gonna be affected by this dairy. Uh, we're gonna have regular rendering pickup. Um, we're injecting our manure and uh, I guess we've always, we've always tried to be good neighbors, proved everybody's who's asked the tile you know i've done snow removal and we've worked on plumbing and electrical and that house that's right next to us you know we've always tried to be good neighbors uh, our current facility i know isn't tip top it's a it's a livestock operation um, most of our neighbors are acreage owners they don't have cattle and everything else drive around the livestock operations in the country i mean it's kind of same story a lot of times. We do have quite a few trees down right now because we had to remove all the trees from the, the right road right away last summer. These trees are 100 years old. You just can't throw a match in them, burn them. You know, they're, so yes, they are there and they need to be cleaned up and they will be cleaned up. Uh, another big issue is as you can see on the maps, we have a creek running on the south side of our property. That's the whole point in this facility is, is to get out of the creek bottom. I can go milking in our current facilities, but it doesn't, you know, we're on that creek, we're in the manure, the NRCS is offering me money to move the operations out. We want to get out and improve the environment. This creek is six miles long, we control over half the property, you know, or almost, between me and my uncles, control almost half the property on there. Both my grandparents, 
grew up on this creek. I mean, it is the center of our farm, you know. There's only two CRP properties on the pro ground. Both of them are our ground. You know, we've been enrolled in NRCS programs trying to clean up the creek, and that's that's our that's our goal moving out of there because I'm the one down there fighting the mud and the and it's, you know, it's not fun, so. Uh, so in closing, I guess I, I'm just asking the neighbors, the townships, this commission to allow me to build this cow-friendly, management-friendly, neighborhood-friendly, environmental, environmentally-friendly facility. Uh, I'm appealing to get the state approval removed uh, because I'm, you know, it's going to take con considerably, you know, three, four more months to get this going. Pushes me into the winter on construction. We do most of the construction ourselves, so it just pushes everything back. It's financially and you know financially and time wise I would much rather invest in things that improve this facility than just in going through you know because the conditions the NRCS the county and the state have are all the same so I'm gonna have the NRCS making sure I'm doing things right and the county you know and they're paying me to do it right and the county watching over I don't see a need to have all three involved because at 25 years old, I, I got a lot of things going on right now, and I'd like to keep moving forward. So, and, you know, ultimately, we're going to milk cows, whether it's in our existing facilities or in these new ones. So, uh, thank you. I, I have one question. Did you say you appealed this decision, <clears throat> and it was because you didn't want the state requirement? Was that uh, it, the number No, I, I just um, added an appeal on the... They had the two conditions for the monitoring well, yeah, and then uh, to get the state permit, I appealed the state permit one. Okay. So. Okay. Just keep this all moving forward. Commissioner Berg. Um, Mr. Albers, so the existing uh, dairy operation are are they housed in a barn? Are they enclosed? Or are we they... we are not milking cows at this time. Okay. Um, those the... are feeder cattle. Okay, and are they out and about, or are they in a barn? They're in the open lots. Some are in barns, sure. some are in open lots. Okay. There's cows to the west of the place, uh, dry lot, uh, you know, just north of the creek. And if I may. And then um, we're going to finish. After you're done with the question, we're going to finish. And so your, your, your planned operation, though, will they all be all enclosed? The planned operation is going to be all enclosed. Thank you. Uh, both capos will be all enclosed. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to the next person who is, is there anyone that is, else that wants to speak in favor of this capo? That wants to speak in favor of it. Can you just give your name and your address, please? Oh, okay. I'm Andy Carson. I uh, work with Central. I'm the consultant that helps Kyle and Brian on their farm. I'm just going to say that I'm, we're going to make, make our, do our best to make sure that we are managing the manure correctly. Um, it's in our best interest. I mean, it's our best interest to apply it correctly and uh, um, follow all the regulations. So it's better for us. It's, it's more money we can save from fertilizer. So okay. I've been doing it for 10 years and work from DNR permitted barns and non permitted barns, and we run them all the same. So, okay. All right. I was going to say that. So. Thank you. Yep. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in favor of this? And we'll go to the opponents. <coughs> Good morning. Good My morning. name is Jay Libel. I'm an attorney in Madison, South Dakota. And uh, my presentation is on behalf of adjacent landowners as well as uh, the townships that are involved. This is on the, the border, basically, of Humboldt and uh, the uh, Hartford, uh, as well as Wellington townships. Dennis uh, Kapperman is one of the uh, landowners that's uh, affected and uh, he will assist me with a, a couple pictures and maps that we want to show you. First of all, we want to make it clear we aren't against the dairy. We think the dairy is a good idea. None of the neighbors, the township, have no objection to the dairy. However, they're very concerned about the process that has brought this before you today. And we have concerns. 
For example, reference has, has been made to the, uh, the adjacent unit that will be abandoned. This is it. Also today is the first time we've heard anything about a, about a hall road. This is the particular road that is going to be used in that particular matter. The township's concerns are that what they wanted, and it was brought up at the last meeting, to identify the hall roads so we can enter into an agreement with the dairy as to what those roads are and what are going to be the responsibilities for the respective parties for the, for the, uh, the maintenance of that road. As the applicant has indicated, there will be a milk truck coming in every day. That means 24-7. That road has to be open, uh, 365, regardless of the weather. Many times, when you have hard, hard rains, those trucks do a lot of damage to the road. The local farmers, they know that. They stay off the roads. But dairies do not have that ability to pick and choose because of the need to get the, uh, the milk to and from market every day. They're going to be on that road. That means it's going to be an additional burden on the townships for attempting to maintain that road. And so what we're asking is that a condition of any permit be that there be a hall road agreement with the township. This is another picture of the road that's involved in it. Just the, the reason for this one is to show the drainage that they've talked about. That's the, uh, the railing that's now on the bridge or culvert. That's the type of road that we're dealing with. We're talking about an old uh, structure that uh, we're very concerned about what uh, this heavy traffic will do, and or not heavy in numbers, but in, in uh, weight is going to do to this particular structure and, uh, and the access that it's going to give to everyone. This is just another picture of that particular drainage. Lastly, this is the picture of the existing facility, which we now understand as of today, may be abandoned for use. But you'll notice it's a proximity to the water. You'll notice that the trees that are in the background, that is the shelter belt that would be on the south side uh, of the, uh, the new facility. The maps, the topographical maps, show that that particular section drops uh, over 50 feet from the north side of the section to the uh, south side of the section. I don't know if it'll show up, but here's a uh, picture uh, off the uh, U.S. geographical map showing the elevations. On the far, uh, be on my right side, you'll notice that there are three uh, portions that I highlighted. Those are the uh, two intersections that are in the north uh, east and the southeast corner of that particular uh, section, section 36. And you can see the mark in the middle, which is the elevation at the, uh, the quarter line or the half mile mark. There's approximately a uh, 25 foot drop in each one of those uh, increments. And everything basically from the west uh, and the north will come through this particular area. So they're very concerned about uh, the circumstances and how this facility is built and constructed. One of our concerns is right now, if you take a look at the petition that was submitted to your planning commission, the applicant was Kyle. The land is owned by his parents, and the nutrition plan mentions, uh, mentions the, the brother's dairy. Our question is, who owns it? Who's going to be responsible for it? Right now in the application that's been submitted to the county, there are three different entities. That, that appear to be involved. We believe that the, the owner of that particular facility should be the one that should be making that application, and that's who it should be granted to. Right now, that's, that's unclear. In addition, there are numerous requirements of your ordinance as to, uh, uh, that are mandatory, using the word shell. Reference was made to those. Promises were made to, de to, that, to, to that effect, I think, today in the presentation by Kyle. But we're requesting that, that the ordinance be followed, that those requirements be met before the, the permit be issued. Specifically, the uh, section and the report indicates that uh, there was no landscape plan. That's required by section 1210. C2A. They made reference to it that they're going to plant trees, but there's no plan. Also, there's a grading plan required under that particular one, uh, 2B. 
requires a grading plan. There is no grading plan. What you have here, as Kyle acknowledged, is a multi-million dollar facility. And what do we have for a plan that's going to be presented? You have one handwritten document. You got to draw it. Maybe I have. million dollar operation and you have a handwritten document it shows a lagoon do we know how big that lagoon is do we know how deep it is do you know that it'll meet the requirements of the number of uh, livestock units that they're going to have in there also you'll notice over on the far right it mentions the road this is the road that was previously referenced it has a 26 foot uh, uh, driveway is that going to be sufficient to bring in the semis is it going to be big enough, big enough for the uh, milk truck in bad weather to make that turn? There's a lot of questions about that particular map. He's mentioned uh, the, it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility. We believe that. But if that's the case, why can't you see it? Why can't he meet the requirements of your ordinance? Present that information. Over the years, I've participated in a number of hearings like this whether it be a dairy, hog confinement unit, or whatever. All of them, when they made the presentation, and this is the only exception, have brought in those engineering documents that have already been uh, drafted by the engineering company to meet the requirements not only of the ordinance, but of state requirements. The literature obviously must be available. I think uh, Kyle did an excellent job of explaining the intent their intentions as to how that, that operation is going to run. And uh, I, I wish him well. We wish him well. We want that dairy to succeed. But right now, there seems to be a lot of questions in regards to that. It's easy to make that presentation orally, but it should be presented to you in writing because that's the requirements of your ordinance. Also, the nutrient plan. Uh, it appears to be under the, that's a self-produced document, it appears to be, at least in my reading, that under your ordinance, at least three of the elements, A, D, and F, are missing out of that particular problem, or out of that particular management program. Also, your ordinance requires uh, written documents for the distribution of the manure. He's indicated that he does have that because it's on family ground, and that there are others. He's referenced that he may have those but those should have been filed or should be filed now with you prior to the issuance of any permit. Again, we aren't saying that the dairy isn't there. Right now, the house that's uh, been an issue, I understand that's his focus. We don't have any problems with that. To, me, to us, the setback distance as far as that, that house is a non-issue. We don't see that as an issue. What we see are the long-range issues, ramifications of this particular, uh, you know, uh, project. We think it has uh, viability. We think it can uh, fit in this particular area. But there are a lot of concerns that they have, the neighbors, the townships have, as to the way this is going to be run. We're asking you to deny the petition now. Let that, you know, have them file those documents. Let the staff review it again. Let's determine who the ownership is. Let's determine uh, who's going to be operating it. Let's, let's see the documents that say not only we, we dug a hole, but let's see the borings to say that where that lagoon is going to, to be uh, is suitable. Obviously, from the drop of the land, this was glacial land. We know that from spot to spot, it can change. You may have beautiful clay 15, 20, 30 feet deep, but right next to it, you can have sand or rock or whatever. And until there's that documentation, it's difficult for anyone, including myself, to stand here and say that this is a safe facility. We believe it can be made a safe facility, environmentally sound. 
But right now, you don't have the documentation to, to establish that, nor have the, the requirements of your own ordinance been met. Therefore, we're respectfully requesting that you do not approve this particular project at that time. Upon proper documentation to you, then we uh, suspect that it will be approved. And we, I was saying, we aren't against it. But right now, there's just too many uh, questions to be asked and answered prior to the issuance of the permit. We'll ask uh, or answer any questions that you may have. We're going to finish with, is, is there anyone else that wants to speak against it? Commissioner Heiberger? Yes. Could I just get clarification about who you're here representing? Today? I am representing the adjacent landowners that are around there that, uh, that signed the petition. Everyone who signed the petition? Yes. In addition, there are a couple other neighbors that are here today that, that were out of the area did not sign the petition. Okay. Also, uh, there are representatives from the township here, uh, Humboldt Township uh, and so forth that uh, are uh, asking me to speak on their behalf saying they would like to have uh, as a condition a road, a road hall agreement. This is the first time we've heard as to how they propose to get the vehicles in and out. And uh, we wish that that, that that issue can be addressed. Uh, if and when the permit is issued, we're going to be asking you, you make that as one of the conditions that there be a hall road agreement with the affected townships. I'm going to, if there's no more opponents, I'll get, give the proponent an opportunity can to I give a comment. Can I ask one more question of, of his representation? Yeah, and then we'll... Are, have you been contracted by the townships, or are you just speaking for a couple of people in the township? I, 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 I don't understand. I, I, am, I am representing the township. Uh, my, uh, one of my functions, I'm the uh, attorney for the State Association of Towns and Townships in that role. I uh, represent individual townships on various issues. I am speaking on behalf of the township board of supervisors. Okay. If there's no more opponents, then I would let Kyle an opportunity. If you have anything you want to um, rebuttal that he said before we go to questions. Pardon? Oh, I'm, yeah. Sorry, I thought you were part of that. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I thought you were raising your hand because you were going to put pictures up. Uh, thank Captain. you for hearing me. I guess I'm one of those that um, like to have somebody speak for me, but I can't keep my mouth shut, so I got to speak myself too. But um, just, I'm Dennis Kapperman. I'm a landowner adjacent to the east and downstream of the proposed dairy. Dennis, could you give your address uh, too? For my the your address for the record, please. Uh, my address is 459 263rd Street, Hartford, okay. which is one mile south, is where I currently live. But I own the property, like I said, I own that half section directly to the east of the proposed dairy. Okay. Um, just to, you know, Kyle has done a good job presenting his case, but a little concerned on the procedures and, and how he's going about this. He's talking about a state-of-the-art facility, and yet in the same regard, he says he's going to do a majority of this himself. Well, there's a little hesitation there how can you put up a state-of-the-art facility when you're not involved in that type of process on a daily basis the other thing of course is the downstream uh, the watershed on this property it is that stream that runs to the south of that proposed dairy is the overflow for the grass lake uh, water uh, lake there so this spring, of course, the pictures we have there are show a minor amount of water coming through there, but generally on a, on a normal snow melt spring, the water is considerably deeper and larger amount of volume coming through there. So we're concerned about possible runoff from the dairy and the existing facilities uh, creating havoc in that. And last but not least, the play on the community around the area. You know, yes, at the, at the current location, there is only one house within close proximity of that dairy. But the haul roads that they will be taking on to and from that facility, here's your Hartford exit off Interstate I-90. You have one road that heads west a half mile and this is the proposed haul road that I'm assuming they're going to go with is one and a half mile south and then three miles to the west. There are a fair amount of occupants along both sides of this road. This of course just shows the occupants in Hartford Township 
There is approximately three, if not four, building sites in this vicinity in the Wall Lake Township that also goes along that road. So there is a fair amount of residents along that first mile of road, both to the north and to the south. So um, there is some concern about the traffic and the conditions of the road. That's what I just wanted to add to this, is that um, it's involving you know, more people than just uh, myself and Kyle and the other two existing landowners here. Um, those people travel the roads. They, they want to make sure that that road is kept in proper maintenance so that they too can commute to and from their workplace because uh, they elected to live out there. They also expect that the roads are open and maintainable uh, for their commute. So. With that, I'll uh, turn it back to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cindy. Captain Kyle. If you have some additional comments. Uh, yeah. In regards to all those houses up there, there'll be one truck going past that place. Uh, there's also two daycares. Everybody has garbage service. Uh, construction company guy who has A1 plumbing. Um, I'm going to have a very small fraction of the road traffic, not to mention all the farmers out there. So I will have one truck going by that place, but you drive down that road now, I mean, it's, it's all rumble strips and that's not my traffic. So, you know, I will have traffic going by that place though, you know, one truck a day. Uh, in regards to having to have trucks in every other, every day, the truck's going to come every day. I'm going to have about two and a half days worth of capacity. So if they don't need, you know, they can't get in, they're, they're not going to have to force their way through. Uh, that bridge there is, been, is on the plans to be replaced prior to this dairy. It's, it's probably close to 100 years old, and it's already on the agenda to get fixed at some point. Um, and it needs to be fixed. Uh, as regards in regards to who's going to own the land, we've already stated. Uh, I didn't get brought up in this uh, meeting, but I will be purchasing the property there. Uh, we haven't done it yet because if I don't build a dairy, there's not a lot of reason for me to own five acres in the middle of my father's property. So we're going to do that, you know, when it happens. Uh, as we have to have the engineers, the end, we have to meet you guys' specs. We don't have it all drawn up now. But once again, I'm, you know, I'm investing a lot of money in this, but if it's not going to happen, I'm 25 years old. I'm not going to spend $20,000 on engineers, on, you know, all this stuff if I'm not approved to do it. I mean, I'm 20 years old. I don't have that kind of, you know, cash just to spend if I'm not going to have an investment that's going to return itself. As far as us not being qualified to build these facilities, we've been... Uh, We've built buildings for SDSU. We've built uh, salt sheds for the state of South Dakota. My dad has been in the construction industry for years on the side with farming. He's worked for Morton Buildings. We've built buildings for Windy Hill Stables, North Town. We've been involved in the construction industry. We have two high lifts, access to two backhoes, multiple excavators. We have on the place now we have two belly dumps. I mean, we have construction equipment. It's not like this is just all oh, we're just gonna build a building. We're more than qualified to build this building and there will be a general contractor on the, on the plans. So yes, I don't have a 3D layout of my entire facilities, but you know, the 3D layout at the end of the day doesn't make the facilities, you know, it. It'd, it'd be nice for everybody to see visually, but it's not something that I can, you know, just afford to dish up the money out of my pocket if this isn't going to move forward anyways. So if you have any more questions. Okay. Right. Commissioner Kelly. Kyle, um, I, I believe the noose bombs, is that, Jeff, am I right on the name there, have a dairy operation over by Garrison or, and then. Yep. And. Okay, and that's an automated, that's a robotic. Is that similar to what you're going to do? Yeah, this is going to be, it's going to have the feed pushers, scrapers, and the automatic milking. Okay. Just like noose bombs, okay. it's just going to be 
I think Noose Bombs is 120 head. This is 480. So it, it's a larger, but it's the same same exact principle. And the uh, and the construction you're talking about doing yourself is the building, not the, the building. not the robotic equipment, which is the big part of it. No, the robotic equipment is you know we're, we'll hire the electrician electrical done for the hybrid tunnel ventilate system, and the robots are all they they come from Sweden, you know, mm -hmm. and then they're all installed by you know they're installed by professionals. I'm I'm just building the facilities itself and doing the concrete. Work. Thank you. That's what I'm. Additional questions. I'm putting it back to the commission for questioning. Madam Chair. Um, Kyle, have you been in touch with the township uh, folks? And maybe Kevin, you might know. Did did we get any feedback from the townships before this? Hmm. Uh, Prior to the Planning Commission meeting, we did not receive any contact from the townships. So at the Planning Commission meeting, they showed up, and uh, it was mentioned that by one of the township supervisors that uh, it's going to be very similar to any other farm operation is the way he described it. Because even though there's going to be the daily load, it's still going to be seasonal feed. It's going to be seasonal manure spreading. And that's and he, so he didn't think there was a big deal with uh, the operation at that planning commission. So did they express opposition at that point? No, they did not express any opposition. They were just there stating that they didn't have opposition, I guess. Thank you. Uh, or, or at least the Hartford and um, and the, the two that I contact, I contacted Hartford and Humboldt, and no opposition was made. So Humboldt wasn't for, wasn't against it, and Hartford had no opposition. Okay. Additional questions? I know Mr. Libel has something to say, but I'm Commissioner Bender. Well, I don't know if you want to allow him to speak on Anybody, the issue you have of the questions. roads, but Whoever I have a question. question. I have a okay. question about this whole waiver from the property owners from the south. Yeah. Have you have? Do you have a waiver? I dropped the waiver off to them, and uh, they they didn't sign it. Um, okay. Well, like I said, they are technically outside of the 1980s, so the required the waiver is not required, and the waiver can be waived if. I am using, if I'm doing things to prevent affecting their, you know, way of life. Um, so your position is one, the waiver is not required, and two, if it is required, that you're meeting the second part of the that, um, yeah, that's ordinance by pre presenting new technology, management practices, topography features, soil conditions, and other features which substantiate a reduction. Yep, and uh, I don't know if I... State's attorney wanted me to provide this. I don't know if I can. So. But that's just a piece of paper saying what I'm doing to reduce the waiver. Where was this list from? Uh, just, just as I have to, they wanted me to have a written list of what I'm proposing to do oh. to improve it. Not, okay. not just he watched the video recordings and we didn't have a written list. Oh, okay. He just wanted a written list. Okay. So. Okay. Additional questions. Mr. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I have one more question, and this may be a question for Kevin. Kevin, can you clarify? Is the the measuring period for the where the waiver is required? Is it measured from the lagoon? Is it measured from the property line of the CAFO? So, uh, for the the measurement of the the offset does not specifically state the property line or or it just says that from the let's see from the concentrated animal feeding operation. Uh, so we uh, classified this as we put this 10 acre parcel that he described in the location and use that 10 acre parcel as the location. Uh, we have seen um, 
uh, other operations have the engineer have the circles around their the building that the closest edges of buildings uh, and have used that in the most recent case for example um, but uh, it just says from the concentrated ammo or operation so. so when you said earlier that it was a close call you were measuring it from the property line to the house yes uh, uh, yes I was and, and I was, when I said it was a close call, when I originally looked at it, I looked at the GIS map, uh, which was its own thing, uh, and then I looked at the... I looked at this GIS map, which was its own just white copy, and, and you can't see the houses. And then I looked at the the imagery map, uh, and look and it looked close. It looked too close for me to call, and I, it did not actually have the measurements there. Um, so that's how I judged it that he needed the waiver. Any more questions for Kyle or Kevin? I believe Mr. Lytle has a comment. I assume it was uh, just a misstatement. But Kyle indicated that he hadn't bought the five acres from his parents yet. That's indicative of what we're trying to say. The map show that it's approximately 10 acres. He's making representations as to the waiver that would allow uh, because of uh, scientific development and the like. It's okay to say that. We believe his intentions are right, but there's no documentation. Once you issue that permit, he starts forward the project. It's going to be almost impossible or very difficult for, for the, the commission or anybody to back off that project if it isn't done the way that it's been orally presented to you. What we're saying is we think that they can meet the requirements. We think that they can do that and that there can be built there. But we're asking that you cross the T's, dot the I's, before you issue the permit. Just don't rely on oral representations. For example, one of the questions that you just asked was on the township's position. A township supervisor did appear, say that he didn't feel the township had any uh, concerns or objections. It's my understanding he's related to Kyle. He spoke without having a, uh, a consensus or a decision from the township board. He was speaking as an individual in his official capacity but unofficially he was speaking on behalf of the board. A township board is just like your board. You're entitled to your own opinions. But basically your only authority is a board member. I am telling you there are township officers here that are saying that that was not the official position of their township. Their official position is that they would like to see a hall road agreement. They believe it can be done. They have no objections as indicated to the dairy but they would like to see that as one of the conditions that there be a hall road agreement a point of order uh, uh, normally our discussion is that the p petitioner has the last word now we're getting another yeah. lecture and, yeah. uh, i don't i don't i don't think it's in order but i don't know that much about law the last comment i would make is take a look at the map his map has eight they're 9.88 acres if you take out the building site and the lagoon site now that takes approximately 2.2 acres. So we're down to 7.66 acres. In that, he's got to have room for parking, food storage, access, manure, everything else. Is the site, based on that map, meeting all of the requirements they're going to need, including, uh, you know, a buffer as to the trees? Kyle, you do get the last. Kyle, you do get the last word. So I was kind of taking a question for Mr. Lively, and I got a little more into questions. So you get the last word. Uh, I guess in regard to the, uh, the townships, I believe there was a signature from a township board member on the appeal as well, not approved by the township. Uh, 
the only township to objected was represented by uh, Denny, who's obviously got a conflict of interest in this. And uh, yeah, in regards to the property, I mean, it, it's plenty large enough for our operation. We don't need a lot of parking because I'm not going to have 25 employees around. So. Okay, thank you. Now, Commission, if you have any questions for anyone, otherwise discussion. Madam Chair, I guess uh, I have a question for staff. <clears throat> Would that DNR <coughs> permit take uh, the, this many months or, you know, I mean. Kyle, you have to. Kevin, excuse me. <clears throat> it would it take three months? I'm not sure exactly. Um, I guess uh, I don't, it wouldn't be unreasonable, but I, I don't know for any specific amount of time. Okay. Additional questions, comments? Madam Chair, Commissioner Barton. I guess, you know, in general, I'm supportive of this uh, type of activity. At the same time, I can understand uh, the concerns about dotting the I's and crossing the T's. I'm personally building a new house, and I haven't picked out all the light fixtures yet, you know, uh, but we're already starting. I mean, uh, there are things that cannot really be uh, written down uh, exactly in advance. At the same time, I also think that some of these issues uh, uh, could be taken a step further before uh, we approve it. And I'm wondering if, uh, if maybe um, uh, if we were to defer action for a week or so, if uh, a couple of these things might be addressable by the applicant. Other comments? Commissioner Barth has suggested a deferral. Well. Uh, I don't know what a week is going to do. Uh, if they want professional engineering drawings and everything else, that's going to take some time and it's going to take a lot of cost. Um, the, the, and the only reason I happened to be at the news bonds was it was like a year ago. This has nothing to do with this particular one. Mm -hmm. I got in trouble for that last time. But uh, the point is that, that the technical part of it is the computer part, is the, is the, the whole robotic operation. And building a building, I don't, you know, I don't think it takes a licensed carpenter to, or contractor to build a building if these guys are capable of doing it themselves, especially if his father has uh, experience in the construction business. The other question I have is the township's concerned about roads. Well, it's, they're concerned they're going to have to spend some money on the roads, but I thought that was their function. And... Uh, uh, I mean, that's why these people pay township taxes, and, and they expect to have decent roads. And, and that, that is a responsibility, that's a primary responsibility, I think, of the township. Um, this is a family deal. Yeah, there might be various little entities within the family, but, but basically he's testified, and I have no reason to believe it otherwise, that this is a family operation. So if dad owns this and son owns this, I, I, to me, that's not a real big deal. But I would hope that we would make a decision today on this and let them move forth if, if we decide that way. Commissioner Bender, do you have a comment? Well, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm an eye dotter and T-crosser by, <laughs> by profession. And so, I mean, it is, and this is my first time through this process, so it is. it was surprising to me that there wasn't more detail provided. Um, and I'm, I am hung up on this whole waiver issue. Um, and I don't, you know, I think if we did have an opportunity to defer it, we could have something more substantial provided that helps me to understand that if we aren't gonna get a waiver specifically, how we meet the second part of that ordinance, I think that's doable in a week. I think progress being made on a hall road agreement could be done in a week or two to show some, um, work towards um, trying to cooperate in, I mean, it seems to me like that's something that could be handled in a week or two. I'm not sure that I'm looking at professional drawn specs, um, but it does appear to me like that there's some technical requirements um, for the, um, for meeting the requirements for the ordinance that haven't been met today that could be met in a, um, in a reasonable period of time. Additional comments? I'm concerned about 
the bridge and I just would like to know what the highway departments you know that's something that I would add to that is I want to know when that bridge is going to be replaced and what the low limit is and on that bridge right now and and what the route is I do side with Commissioner Kelly as far as it is the township's responsibility to maintain roads but it would be also interesting to know what the road what that road can withstand for for weight um, and how much a mail caller is going to haul but you have tractors going down that with large equipment and they may be putting the same amount of weight on that road I don't know but those are questions I would have about the road issue Kevin I also I'm wondering if do we require other people building buildings to have engineers reports and um, I mean what what are some of the things I mean in the past the uh, for a building such as this where it is a uh, CAFO, we require for sure the engineer for the uh, lagoon. We also have required in the past engineer drawings for a uh, building uh, for a CAFO like this and this size. So um, engineer drawings uh, would be something that, yeah, would be helpful. Um, but the who builds it, uh, they can build it. That, that was, is not a requirement to who builds it that has to be. So would the engineer's drawing be part of those conditions on those 14 conditions or would th that they couldn't go forward until they had them or would that be something you had to have before they could even come and ask for a conditional use permit? The The, the it would be something that is uh, required by it being the the case Scott coming that, up. That, that, yeah. Scott's yeah. coming up. Uh, the there would need to be the engineered plans for the lagoon system. That's part of the conditional use permit for the for the CAFO. Once we get to the building, if it triggers, if the size of the building triggers when they apply for the building permit, oh, that's okay. when we would require engineer plans for the okay. building. So, so that the, there's, it's that. sort of a two-part okay. process there. And if if it is the desire of the commission to continue this, i sort of like it continued for two weeks because next Monday's a holiday and that's not really going to oh, give us yeah. a lot of time to address right. anything. Right. Commissioner Hedberger? Yes. Can, can I ask a follow-up question to that? So, but we have not received any engineer drawings for the lagoon. Is that correct? No, we have not. But those engineer drawings would be required before you could move forward with building the lagoon. So that is correct. You don't have to have it for the original proposed CAFO conditional use permit. That mm -hmm. is not required. Okay. okay. Madam Chair. Commissioner Barr. I've, I've often uh, commented about how technologies change and the technologies of agriculture have changed over time. And, you know, looking at the existing operation there, it's clear to me that this new project would really do wonders uh, for the water in the area. You know, when people regularly complain about CAFOs, uh, uh, you know, and what it does to the water, the idea of an enclosed facility with an engineered waste disposal system uh, is clearly better than having cattle standing uh, in open fields or in in the in the Big Sioux River, scenic as that might be. Uh, so, you know, I think just from the point of view of protecting our water, that this will be an improvement for that area. And if I may, I'd like to suggest we do, as our planning director suggests, take a, uh, a two-week deferral. I'll make that motion and ask for a second. I'll second motion. I have a motion and a second for a two-week deferral. <coughs> Yes, Ben, you did. Sorry. Do you have any specific things you want in this re in this deferred? I, I would like to uh, hear more about the townships, about the bridge. Maybe our own highway department could uh, uh, improve that. Uh, the, the driveway, uh, is that big enough for the, these vehicles? I think that uh, the engineered d design doesn't have to come to me at this point, uh, but I think that... Uh, uh, I am interested about the DENR part still at this point and would be interested to see how long it would take to do this. I would think that uh, our state being uh, uh, agriculturally based, uh, that somebody in peer could uh, kick some uh, something and get things moving on that. I have a motion and a second to defer for two weeks to get some more documents in line. Any other questions or comments or things that you want to see by in two weeks? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. We are deferring for two weeks for some extra work for Kyle.
Okay. Uh, we will move on to item number 11, to authorize the chairman to sign a contract between Minneapolis County and Banner Associates in the amount of $66,100 for bridge, bridge reinspection program. DJ Boothy. Good morning, DJ. Good morning, commissioners. What, what do you know about that bridge? What's that? What do you know about that bridge? You know bridge? what? We will yeah, talk about that bridge later. Yeah. Not now. <laughs> Not now. We got I things to do. I probably talk for 20 minutes. No. Yeah. Well, you got, you got 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> um, what we're doing here is, as you guys are all familiar with our, our annual bridge inspection program, our process that we go through, and, and how that typically works is the majority of our structures are inspected every other year. It happens to be uh, even numbered years. That's when we inspect the majority of our structures. And then the odd number years, like 2015, we have a much smaller quantity of structures that are inspected. The ones that are on the 12-month the inspection cycle are the ones that just happen to be constructed in, uh, in odd years that are on the two-year inspection process. And, and that works great. Um, However, when you look at budgeting, trying to budget for an unequal uh, balance of funds uh, necessary for inspections, and then receiving those bridge reports, having a whole bunch of maintenance work to do one year, and then not very much to do the next year, it's difficult to manage at times. And so uh, what the state advised us and, and helped us with was getting on to a plan that's more consistent every every year where we're basically inspecting half of our structures every single year and and they are willing to help us uh, get into that program uh, the caveat is that we have to pay up front uh, the inspection costs one time uh, to get those on that uh, that cycle where we're doing half of them every year okay. that's what this uh, uh, fee is for for banner associates to inspect i think it's 88 structures this year uh, to the tune of sixty-six thousand one hundred dollars will get us on a very manageable uh, program for our bridge maintenance and our bridge maintenance inspections and uh, we look for your support for this for this agreement okay any questions for dj is there a motion move for approval second I have a motion and a second to um, sign the contract between minneapolis county and banner associates all those in favor say aye. aye aye those opposed same sign motion passes unanimously thank, thank you. you item number 12 is a discussion of the realignment of the south dakota office of emergency management um, coordinator's position and the impact on minneapolis county lindy young uh, Commissioners Lindy Young, Emergency Management. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we were informed that the Office of Emergency Management was reorganizing uh, the state offices. And at that time, they indicated um, what it would do for them. Uh, over the last couple weeks, um, I've been thinking about how that impacts us, uh, Minneapolis County, and the planning uh, that we work with for the st or with the state in uh, different activities, including. Uh, response, training, exercise, and mitigation, and other efforts. Um, the office has been located within Minnehaha County for the last 25 years, and they are currently going to move it to uh, Mitchell, South Dakota, along with some other reorganization. Um, just a quick... So as you can see, uh, we're located obviously where the one is, and they would be relocating the office to Mitchell and kind of regrouping. Um, it's my opinion that uh, with the hazards that we have in the in the county, including obviously the, the largest county in the state, um, the fact that we have uh, five hospitals uh, within Minnehaha County that we work with, the challenges of the Big Sioux River and the flooding of that, um, uh, Bach and crude being transported through the county, uh, the interstate, the largest airport, and then other things uh, that I've indicated uh, in the past. I just really feel that um, it's my position as emergency manager to bring that forward to the commission to allow you to make that next decision. Uh, do we ask the state to reconsider this at the governor's level? Uh, and if so, any guidance that you would have for that? or do we just work with the state uh, and move forward? So um, as I indicated, like I said, for the past 25 years, this has been the case. We've worked with them and we don't, we haven't had any problems. It's been of great benefit uh, for us to have that regional partnership with the state of South Dakota uh, during different emergency and disaster events that we've all been through. Uh, so I'd be willing to answer any questions uh, that the commission might have. Any questions or comments for Lynn? Mr. Heitberger. Yes. I, mean, I would be strongly in favor of asking um, 
the governor's office or whoever makes this decision to reconsider th this decision, or at least to get a better explanation as to why this decision makes sense. Um, which from my perspective and for the reasons that Lynn stated, um, I, th I think he made a very compelling argument that it makes a lot of sense to leave that office here in Minnehaha County. Additional comments? Commissioner Kelly. I uh, sometimes want, you know, I mean, we're kind of interfering with the department themselves and their organization, and, and uh, uh, perhaps we could have an objection, but uh, is, did you say they're going down to three districts, Lynn? Yep, so what they're going to do, it, actually three regional offices. Currently, what they have is they have a person in uh, Rapid City uh, with item four. They have two in Pier. One is, and then uh, they serve three and five, one in Mitchell, one in uh, Aberdeen, and then one in Sioux Falls. The new plan will indicate um, two in Mitchell, two in Aberdeen, two in Rapid City, with a supervisor located in Mitchell also. So the area is as big no matter what, whether they're in Sioux Falls or Mitchell. I, yeah. I guess I'm just a little concerned that, that we, uh, uh, some of our departments have a lot of contact with other agencies in Pierre and Pierre, and um, uh, I think with today's electronics and everything, it's not a really big deal. When we start going in and saying, well, we got the biggest hospitals and we got the biggest this and this and this, this is why the, the rest of the state has a dislike for us often. And I, I, I just not sure that this is the battle to get into that, uh, uh, that we should be interfering with. I, I would prefer your last deal is that just go forward, work with them, and yep. make it make the best we can of it. Yep, and as we've indicated, whatever the commission decides, uh, we obviously will do what's right to, to protect and work with uh, the state, but uh, for the citizens of, citizens of Minneapolis County. Uh, but I also felt that as a department head, this was maybe one step above my pay grade, <laughs> and that's why I needed to bring it to the commission. Additional comments, Commissioner Burke? You know, I, I guess I sympathize with uh, uh, Lynn's uh, suggestion here. I know that when we had that uh, horrible rain and snowfall out west that killed thousands of cattle, that they never even opened the emergency management center in Pier. I mean, do they really care about what's going on out here? I think having a person here uh, would, be, would be better, and I think the potential for disaster is greater here than it is in, say, Harding County. Uh, we, um, you know, the idea of, and I don't even want to suggest all the disasters that could happen, but uh, with our population and the the transportation issues, the infrastructure issues that we have, uh, w we could easily have some incredible disasters out this way, and we need we need peer to recognize that. Uh, uh, it's significant here, not just in Pier. I think th they did open that d d disaster uh, the emergency uh, center when they had the flooding in Pier, right? Yes. I rest my case. No comments. Commissioner Benega. When, when this was proposed uh, way back when, I'm assuming this was discussed off and on for a while, did you have any input into the conversation or were you asked to have any input? Uh, absolutely none. The uh, first indication that we had was the email that I forwarded to the commission on April 14th, letting them know, or letting all the counties in South Dakota know that this was going on. Since then, I've had additional conversations with the uh, uh, peer and just let them know that you know, I don't think that that was the proper way to notify the counties. You know, we didn't have, you know, any input in the process and um, that I thought that was wrong because not only are the counties their partners, but the citizens within the counties are their, uh, you know, the folks that we're all working for, you know, to make uh, our community and our county safe from all those hazards that, you know, we've discussed. So. To answer your question, no, we didn't have any input, Commissioner. Just a follow-up, uh, does the um, regional coordinator act as a first responder? What is the responsibility of that individual? So the main responsibility of that individual is to assist counties in planning, uh, training, exercising, and then yes, um, he would respond on the state behalf um, on a list of things that they want inf more information for. Uh, so, the, so just recently in... Uh, Last weekend with the tornado in Delmont, they sent two regional coordinators from Mitchell down there right away on Sunday, and those regional coordinators 
um, assist with getting state resources lined up because just like I can only request county resources then I would make that next request to the state when we're short of resources um, you still they still work for that other level of government um, and take you know we would work together to form the direction but they still would work for the state of South Dakota they wouldn't work for us directly um, so to answer your question yes um, quite quickly in the Delmont area and that's that's uh, to ensure adequacy, adequacy of the response for the you know the community uh, and the citizens and it's it's been that way like I said for the last 25 years and um, it's worked well in this county and we hope that we can continue it in the future if we had some type of disaster in Minneapolis County both of those people from Mitchell would be coming to Sioux Falls that's the understanding uh, that we would have or that we would request um, uh, so yeah that's that's what they've indicated to us correctly I, I guess I can I can kind of see the state's point if they're going to go to three regions and Mitchell is 60 miles from us if we have a disaster or impending disaster we're going to call them and they're going to come running and they wouldn't be 15 miles out of town or 10 they'd be 60 um, I think that you know the numbers may show it in the future if we're calling them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth the state's going to say it doesn't make any sense to pay all this gas and all this time and all this extra and let's just put them back in Sioux Falls um, and I'm sure they're concerned about their budgets just the same as we are that's that's kind of where I come down on it if we don't if he doesn't have to be here and he can drive back and forth because if it's for training he can drive to Sioux Falls and they can pay his hotel bill for or whatever and and they may find out that it's more expensive to have him traveling back and forth and to have him here in the city yeah. and maybe not and we've had those conversations with the state also that you know said uh, you know what is the right time frame and maybe that's the direction from the Commission today also right. is is if this isn't working in a year is then the time to ask them to reconsider yeah. um, I had just had that conversation with them yesterday is yeah. what's the right time frame here so yeah. uh, and who makes that decision once again do I right track those things and that's not really what I want to do either is you know track their performance that's not my job that's the the governor's job and the secretary's job so but I think the Mitchell person would know too what his what's the performance like am I spending no time doing any I mean if I do have no jobs whatsoever anywhere but in Minneapolis County and I'm spending 99% of my time in Minneapolis County then it's kind of a no-brainer correct but, um, any additional comments or a motion or is it just discussion Well, I make a motion that we uh, uh, write a letter to Pierre and suggest that they reconsider this and uh, keeping in mind our concerns. Okay, I have a motion to reconsider. Send a letter to Pierre and ask them to reconsider. Is there a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any other comments? I guess uh, my only comment is I'm sure they had rationale for why they did it. Uh, I think if we just had clarification from them rather than go through a formal write, letter writing campaign, uh, if we could get that explanation, they made what they thought was a reasonable decision and we'd just like some input on what that was. Okay. So more of a letter to ask for input and reasoning? If they would like to provide that, yeah. Is that all right with the motion? The second? It's okay with me. Yes. Okay. Good idea, Gerald. We have a motion and a second just to uh, inquire of the state as to what the reasoning was or the rationale for moving out of Minneapolis County. All those in favor. Right, wait. So, so we're not. We're just simply asking. Yeah, them we're just asking why for the rationale. We're not. Not, we're not saying we think it should be in two falls right. or anything. We're not demanding. No, we're not demanding anything. We're just asking for rationale as to why they moved out. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would assume that you would bring that letter back to us so that we could approve yeah. it and sign it. So, yep. Thank you. Uh, item number 13 is a consider a motion to authorize an increase in the Sheriff Department's front desk petty cash fund. Good morning, Kristen Trana with the Minnehaha County <coughs> Sheriff's Office. I am um, presenting to you that we would like to increase the amount of petty cash available for making change for things like distress warrants, civil uh, service, pistol permits, fingerprinting, those sorts of services from, um, to a total of $900 at the Sheriff's Office. I'll make a motion to increase that from $400 to $900. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number 14 is consider a motion to authorize an increase in the Sheriff's Department's alcohol com uh, compliance check petty fat 
cash fund, excuse me, Christian Trana. Um, uh, similar situation, um, we, with the growth of the county <coughs> and the growth of the, the number of places that need to be checked, we are <coughs> increasing the amount of CIs that we're hiring um, to assisted what they've been called in the past has been liquor stinks as far as when we send people who are underage um, an attempt to purchase alcohol. Um, and we've gotten to where we don't feel that we have enough, and so we'd like to increase that total okay. to be available. I'll make a motion to increase that amount to $700. Do a motion, a second. Any additional questions? All where do you keep all the booze you bought? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Ken McFarland. Commissioner, just for a point of clarification on the previous uh, on the previous one, and that um, if that motion could just reflect the increase to 900, uh, you know, quite frankly, the reason why is okay. because our last official records that we show show the last authorization was at two, not four. Okay. And so by going to nine, that takes care of that. So item number 13 reflects that total is 900 dollars, and item number 14 reflects that it goes to 700 dollars. Thank you. Item number 15 is a briefing on the Minnehaha County Ordinance MC 1125 establishing license costs for temporary malt beverage license and temporary liquor licenses. Ken McFarland. Commissioners, um, this was, um, excuse me, <clears throat> South Dakota statute requires that the counties by resolution establish what the parameters are for issuing special licenses for temporary malt beverage and temporary liquor licenses. You did that uh, back in June 21st, uh, 2011, and you have copies of that particular resolution that was adopted. That current resolution sets the, restricts the number of temporary and special licenses up to six per year for any uh, organization. When we first drafted that, there was no restrictions on the number of licenses. Uh, at that meeting back in June, there was an attempt to change it to 12, and then, and then there, by official action, the commission changed it to six. And it was my understanding that the reason was is because they didn't want somebody to use the special license provisions to avoid having to go out and get a, <coughs> excuse me, to go through the process to get a normal malt beverage or liquor license. And that, so I was asked to schedule this for uh, consideration. There's been a number of times and we've had these uh, license issues come up where the issue of the restriction of six is out there. And, that, and so we were asked to uh, at least raise the issue again to see if there is any desire on behalf of the commission to change that number from six to whatever or to even remove the restriction. We're certainly not requesting today or even or prepared to make a recommendation today and that on what that should be, whether it should be stay at six or whether it should be a certain number or taken off completely. But we wanted to bring the issue and put it back on the table for your consideration because the issue has come up a number of times uh, whenever we've had these discussions. Cindy can tell you all the particulars about, you know, what qualifies for a special license and why, um, you know, and how that impacts uh, uh, the difference between that and a regular license. But uh, again, we just raised the issue for you as something you may want to take a look at at another time. So. And this was a briefing, and I brought this up just because um, Dick Kelly brought it, Commissioner Kelly brought it to my attention um, in April, and after reading it, I would be interested in, you know, putting it back to 12 or even just removing it, but I would be interested in doing something. This is a briefing, and so if you don't want to take any action on it at all, we will just put on the agenda in a couple of weeks, so I'm just looking for your interest on whether you would like it put on the agenda so we could discuss it. Well, I think we're going to look at it. Um, it's is this six per? Hello. That's right. Yeah. Is this six per per uh, like high V catering, or is it six? It's not six for the whole county. It, no. No. no so, yeah. and and what happens is some of these facilities, <coughs> like that one out east of town. Uh, could end up not not being eligible because it goes against them. Is that correct? Cindy? It's, it's six per applicant. So 
it's the it's the entity that will be selling the malt beverage or liquor, such as the catering companies. Mm -hmm. Like if they're going out to Crooks the Gun Club, it would be that caterer that can only get six. So really, you're just limiting the caterer's ability to serve at that location only six times per year. And there's no way he can get a full permanent license that mm -hmm. rotates, is there? So well, he, he's he, already he could, he could apply for permanent liquor license through the state, but they're not eligible for a liquor license because they only have a malt beverage. So the state has already restricted who is eligible to receive a special event license dependent upon what state license they currently hold, or it can be to a civic, charitable, educational, or fraternal organization. But the state is really very restrictive, and it has to be in conjunction with a special event. So it can't just be to open up business on a weekend to have people come in and have a party every weekend at the Crooks Gun Club. It has to be a special event like a wedding reception, a fundraising event for an organization. So the state has really restricted those requirements for issuing special event licenses. This just frees up the larger caterers to do more to, events. Right, to, to have more than six. I, you know, I think we got to keep in mind this catering business has changed significantly. Well, in the we last have, 10 years, and there's have. a big demand now. And there's Back in 2009, 10, and 11, and 12, we only issued four special event licenses. Um, last year, we issued nine, and so far this year, we already have seven yeah. issued. You're also limiting people that want to hire somebody because if if you hired a, if you wanted to hire a caterer and they'd already had their six at that then you'd have to say we'll have to get a new caterer and maybe i don't want to get a new caterer so we are limiting um mm -hmm. the options of our taxpayers too but if you are okay with that we will put it on a future agenda for a um, motion okay move on to um can that make that be so Number 16 is Minneapolis County Liaison Assignment Reports. Are there any? Commissioner Barth. Madam Chair, I went to the uh, East Dakota Water District and uh, some developments they have. Uh, they now have real-time nitrate monitoring in the Big Sioux River. They can tell you where it's at today. They can tell you where it's at after a one-inch rainfall. Uh, they also had a study that uh, came out talking about the flow in the Big Sioux River. And there's a jump up in 1980, and it's never gone back down again. Uh, we're not sure if it's runoff from parking lots and paved streets in Sioux Falls or what, but uh, anyway, just kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Any other liaison reports? Madam Chair, we also had a meeting of the uh, Public Advocates uh, uh, Board. Yeah, Gene and I were there as well. All right. Any new business? Any old business? Yeah, you know, the, the district meeting is Friday, and of course we're or Thursday, and Thursday. we're in budget yeah. at the same time. Uh, and Ken, did you indicate that there might be something coming up at that meeting that could be important to us? Well, what I was indicating is that, um, you know, there has been some discussion about um, resolutions that come through the association process for consideration at convention that they may be much more um, persnickety and have them come through a district meeting first and to be approved by a district before they go up to the convention and so if that's the case that, could, that does accelerate the process for us as far as submitting any proposed resolutions I'm not sure that that's a good idea this year anyway, particularly with the legislature getting ready to do their summer study and seeing what might come out of that particular um, endeavor. But I just wanted you to be aware that I do think that uh, putting resolutions through the, the at the district meetings and have them approved at the district level is going to be more important going into the future. Um. I'm on the resolutions committee, and I've not heard a thing about this. So, did, did your source come out of the middle of the state, or, or where did um, you hear that, yeah. that, that this would go? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I would kind of like to keep it on the days that we have set thus far, because we'd like to get them when all five commissioners are available and when Ken is still working for us. Yeah. So. You know, as far as setting those dates and that... Um, 
you know, I've, I know that your time levels are tight. I have tried to pencil out what I, how I think we can, and I haven't notified departments yet, and that because I was waiting to confirm the schedule today. But uh, if you confirm today that those are the dates that we're going to do it on the 10th and the 11th, and that we'll start making those phone calls and slotting all the departments in. But I do think that if we keep to a good, pretty good tight time frame, we can get the departments in within those two days. And even taking a break for lunch. Yeah. So. I, I think we can do it too. I think we've been through it enough times as this group that we can get it done in two days and it'll give us a chance to look at it and come back and discuss it later. So if there's no objections, I'm gonna tell Ken to go forward with that. Okay. Um, then I would look for a motion to adjourn into executive session for personnel, contract negotiations, and legal briefings. We will be reconvening, well, not reconvening, but we will be having a um, budget overview, preliminary overview session starting immediately following the executive session. So is there a motion? I'll make that so motion. Move. I have a motion and a second for executive session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. We are adjourned.